I'm Oliver Slope with Blue Line Futures coming to you from the Chicago Board of Trade with another episode of Tech Talk. It is Tuesday, January 12th, USDA Day, and boy, did we get some fireworks. And we're going to get into that, but uh, first I want to congratulate our two winners, Paul M. and Brian H. Call the Close Champions. They correctly called the close. They called Limit Up Corn prior to the USDA report, so this trophy is en route to them. Congratulations, everyone else. Sorry, today is not your day. You'll have a chance uh, in the next USDA report. So without further ado, we'll kick things off here with the corn market. Corn finishing limit up on the day, 25 cents, and that puts us in expanded limits for tomorrow's session, which is 40 cents. Now, soybeans and wheat, they finished higher, but it wasn't limit, and so we will not have expanded limits. Limits remain intact there at 70 and 40 cents, respectively. Now, looking at the options market, you can kind of get an idea of where March corn would have been trading if there were no limits. Um, and those options were pricing in about 525, so you could say seven to eight cents higher. And that would be the highest price for front month futures since July 2013. So a historic rally here, no doubt. And we've been trying to look for a little bit of a top as we've been overextended. Uh, we thought we might get something here against that psychologically significant $5 handle, but today just blew through. And in this morning's report, we laid it all out there. And, and, this type of environment, nothing is off the table. Limit up, limit down, or unchanged. And that is going to continue to play true going forward. Uh, there is no telling how high this can go. And we talked about that during the last USDA report, which is at this wedge. We got out above contract highs, and we've been writing about this in our daily reports and talking about it. Finding meaningful technical resistance in a market that is in uncharted territory is a fool's errand. There's no way around it. Uh, sure, you can look at, at continuous charts, but it's not going to hold the significance that you're going to be able to trade off of. So I, I, anything that you read with regards to technical resistance when we're making six-year highs, I would take it with a massive grain of salt. Momentum, obviously a, a key here, potentially some commercial shorts getting squeezed a little bit. Funds, very extended alongside. Uh, so expect this volatility to continue on both sides not just up at some point there will be uh, some big down days as well but obviously the path of least resistance is and has been higher uh, so that was the big day in corn i wanted to touch on live cattle a little bit here uh, we've been pretty upbeat on the deferred months february we've had a a little bit of a caution flag on here in the near term as we run against the shot clock we don't see cash really dropping or accelerating higher in the near term. So I think that's going to be somewhat muted. Um, we did have April cattle back off a little bit. They failed against this kind of congestion pocket that we've laid out in our morning reports. They're approaching uh, this, this trend line support and a couple moving averages down here. These are must hold areas for the bull camp. A break and close below here could potentially mute the optimism. But one of the deferred contracts that performed really well was August, uh, making new moves, uh, new, our new highs for the move. Um, and we expect that to continue. We've talked about the fund money recently, really not participating in the livestock markets. And I think that is starting to turn in these deferreds. I was disappointed April couldn't keep up with the August contract, uh, but nonetheless, I think funds will continue to look at that as an underpriced asset looking out a little bit further. Uh, so I think there's good good potential there in livestock markets to continue working higher. That doesn't mean that we're going to go straight up like we did in corn and beans, uh, but I do think a grind higher would probably be likely in these markets. Now, moving over to lean hogs, uh, again, this is something we laid out in our daily livestock roundup. 68 to 68.50 is a bit of a congestion point. This was previous resistance now becomes support. We think there's opportunity in livestock markets, and that includes these lean hog futures, but we need to defend 68 to 68.50 here for the February contract. A break and close below that would probably neutralize us a little bit more in the very near term, as it could lead to some accelerated selling and a potential retest at the bottom end of the range, 63 to 64 in this double bottom that we saw here in November and December. So that's what we're looking at. That's what you should be looking at too. This has been Oliver Slope with Blue Line Futures from the Chicago Board of Trade. Remember, trading futures and options involves substantial risk of loss and it's not suitable for all investors.